So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to incorporate all the things that we've brought into our running so far in the previous 10 weeks, focused on our footwear, focused on our feet, focused on what our knees are supposed to be doing. And as we talked about, we really want to establish a running pattern where our feet are underneath of us. So we're landing more on our forefoot and more on our midfoot. And the reason for that is we've discovered that if we land on our heel, we're not getting forward momentum. One of my favorite papers to uh, encapsulate this is Dr. William Rossi. He's got uh, Why Shoes Make Normal Gait Impossible. He wrote that in 1999. But what that paper captured was the reality that if we add progressively higher heel heights onto our footwear, it dramatically changes our pelvis, it dramatically changes our hips. And Dr. Rossi pointed out that if we're on a level barefoot flat platform, our body column will typically line itself up the way it should. However, in the last 15 to 20 years, we've been running in running shoes with an elevated heel on them. Uh, and Dr. Rossi has a very nice series of diagrams where he shows a person standing straight up tall on bare feet, person on a one inch heel and what starts to happen to the body column, two inch heel, three inch heel, and so forth. We don't walk around like this, we have to make some subtle changes here. And some of those subtle changes uh, may not allow us to have the proper gait pattern that we want to have. In fact, they're going to actually cause us to slow down as opposed to position ourselves to keep speeding up. So we've already covered that in, I think, week three. We talked about getting rid of the heel elevation on the footwear so as to be able to get the foot under our bodies. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about hip position and pelvis position uh, and how to use that hip position and especially how to use gravity to move our bodies forward. Uh, I brought two demonstrators with us today. Come on up, Kai and Lan. And we practiced this last night, so we're going to go over a couple simple drills. Uh, before we go over this, though, I want to touch on one of the things that we've talked about many, many times in Minimalist Mondays ever since the very beginning, which is we all run in our own footsteps. We all have our own pace. We all have our own cadence. And furthermore, we all have our own body posture for running. If you're reading chi running, you're reading pose technique running, you're reading evolution running, you're going to get a series of ideas about how to hold your body and how to hold your posture. And we'll go over that today. After we warm up, we'll do a simple little series of drills that I learned from Dr. Mark Kukazella to put all these things into motion, then we'll have some fun with it. Hopefully we won't get rained on. So we're going to cover two different ways of holding your body. The first way typically is taught by the chi technique people, the pose technique people. And that technique is to think of your body from your ankle bone to your knee bone to your hip bone to your shoulder and all the way up through the top of your spine as being in one straight line. So let's have you girls turn to the side. And Kaya and Lana are going to demonstrate a straight body column. And uh, I'm going to tilt it forward. Look. Good. So what we're going to do is we're going to experiment a little bit with what body lean can be accomplished here. So, in fact, let's all go ahead and do that together. Feet about shoulder width apart. Nice and tall. String pulling up out through your head. And what we're going to experiment with is treating your body as if it's one tall board, one tall timber, and we're just going to lean forward. Go ahead, honey. Good. And then we're going to lean back. And we're just going to get an appreciation for what that feels like, loading the heels and then leading forward and loading the balls of the foot and trying as much as you can to keep everything lined up so you'll get an appreciation for what kind of motion is available there. The other technique is rather than our whole body column being in one straight line and moving like a single timber, the other technique that is very well accepted and has been actually accomplished in world record sprinting is for the upper torso to maintain straight up and down, but the movement to be within the pelvis. So within the hips rather than the whole body. So this part stays stationary and you rather experience a little bit of backward tilt and a little bit of forward tilt. So, did I capture it? Okay, so those are the two accepted methods. And uh, we'll experiment a little bit with that today. Uh, before we do that though, let's do a little bit of a warm up. And after our warm up, we'll go find a piece of grass over here and we'll do a little bit of experimentation. So, our typical warm up, let's go ahead and do our soft hops. It's a nice, gentle. Uh... 
Okay, before we do this drill, let's go ahead and practice our lean a little bit again. And the two kinds of lean, feet shoulder width apart, body column nice, straight and tall. And you're basically just gonna let your body column fall forward. If you listen to the chi people, the pose technique people, they believe that this is harnessing gravity. And that if you eventually go far enough, you automatically kick into your running style. So we'll practice a little bit of that too. Uh, Dr. Mark Kukazella from the Natural Running Center taught me a nice way of incorporating all the things that Sanatan and I have taught you so far, coupled with this body lean. So in a moment, uh, my daughters and I are going to demonstrate. We're actually going to put a TheraBand around your waist. We're going to have you run in place, keeping a nice tall body column, but your partner is going to hold you back gently. So essentially, you're going to be running in place, leaning forward, leaning forward, and at a certain point when you've got your momentum up, your partner is going to let go of the TheraBand and off you go. So the goal is to be nice and tall using one of those two methods and uh, we'll just experiment a little bit with it. So we're going to go around the waist of the person, feet about shoulder width apart, good. Nice tall body column, okay. And what Lana's going to do is she's just going to start marching in place and then she's going to start leaning but her sister is going to hold her back. Okay, familiar how to do that? Okay, start, start marching in place. Okay, nice straight body column. Then you start leaning a little bit. Go faster, 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 faster. Okay, let go, Kaya. There, okay, good, all right. So that's what we want to experiment with. Well done, all right. So, so uh, let's see, uh, Son, let me practice with you. I'm going to use Sanatan as an example too. Okay. Uh, so let's have you go off down this way. So he's basically going to do his upright body posture. If some of you need to double up the band, that's fine too. In fact, I think I'll need to with Son. Um, the goal is to just get that nice gravity lean going, and that at a certain point, your partner is going to just go ahead and let go. Okay, so Sonata's going to start in place, getting his nice body column. He's going to start jumping up and down. I'm going to hold him back as he progressively leans, and at a certain point, I'm just going to let go. Yeah, all right. Okay, so let's just have a little bit of fun with that and experiment with that. Thanks, everybody. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I love running. I love running. I love running. I love running. I love running.